In this lesson, I'm going to talk about the nth term test for divergence of a series. So, before before I get to that point, uh, there's an important theorem that we have to that we have to discuss a little bit, and that theorem is what you see there. So basically, what it says is that if you have a series, uh, an infinite series that converges, then the limit of the nth term test will go to zero. Okay. So this is actually. Um, Think of this as a, this is in a form of a P implies Q statement, okay? So this part right here, the series converting, that's your P value. The limit part is your Q value. So this is nothing more than the form of P implies Q, and this is what we call a direct statement, okay? So, um, so one thing to note about this is that the uh, the converse, okay, the converse of this theorem is not true, okay. So the converse is that if you just reverse the direction of the arrow here, so we would say the converse would be where q q would imply p. So that is what we call the converse statement. So in this case, uh, the converse statement would be if so if q okay so if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n goes to zero this would imply that the series okay the infinite series uh, would converge So the converse is not always true, okay? So this statement, okay, this is, so this statement is not always true, all right? Okay. All right, so it's very important to realize that. Um, for example, there's another theorem that you probably remember from Calc 1. It was saying that if, you have a if the if you have a if the derivative exists at a point then that means it's continuous at a point okay however the other way is not true if you have a if you have a function that's continuous at a point it may not necessarily be differentiable at that point okay and a good example of that was the absolute value function right the absolute value function um, if you're just looking at the absolute value x we know that it's it's continuous everywhere but it's not differentiable at zero, okay? So that would be, you know, that would be an ex some sample like for this type of direct and converse statement, okay? So the point is that, yes, the, you have P implies Q here, but it's not gonna be true all the time for going the other direction, okay? So, um, before, so before I go to the nth term test, I wanna prove this theorem, okay? So whenever we prove a, this type of form, this direct form, we have to assume P, okay? If we're doing, so this is what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna, uh, we're doing a direct, a direct proof here, okay? Okay, so first we're gonna assume that, assume that the series converges. Okay, so that means if the series converges, by definition, that means the limit of the partial sums are converging. They're approaching a finite value. Okay. All right, so we're using our, we're using our assumption P, and so we have to go through a set of logical steps to get to Q. Okay, so this implies that the limit of the partial sums associated with that series is converging, let's say, to L. Okay, so let's assume L is finite here, okay. Okay, so it's converting. All right. 
So because of this, all right, we can use the fact that S of n partial sums is equal to the nth minus 1 partial sums plus a sub n. Okay. So let me explain a little bit. Let me elaborate on this statement. Okay. And just for simple purposes, let's assume that n is 4. Okay. Okay, let n be 4, for example. So if I write, okay, so if I write uh, S4, so S4 we know, okay, that's going to be, okay, okay, so S4 is going to be uh, A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub 3 plus A sub 4, okay. Okay, again, those those are values are coming from the sequence. Okay. All right, so S of N minus 1, so let's see, S3 is going to be A1 plus A2 plus A sub 3. Okay. So if I say, right, so S4, so basically S4 is the same thing as saying S3 and then plus the, the last term. The, the last, the ace four term. Okay. All right. So that's all this, that's all this, that's all that means. Okay. So you have the nth minus one and then you add on the last term. Okay. For the, uh, for the finite partial sums. Okay. So based on this, okay, then what we can do, okay. Uh, we can take, we can, Go ahead and take the limit, okay? So we're going to take the limit of this, okay? We're going to take the limit of both sides. Okay, so we have that the limit of S of N as N goes to infinity is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n minus 1 plus a sub n. Okay, and then we can go ahead and split up this limit. So this will be, using the properties of limits, this will be s of n minus 1, or the limit of s of n minus 1 plus the limit of a sub n. Okay. So we know, all right, from our assumption, we know this, the limit of s sub n goes to L. And this, the limit of s sub n minus 1 will also go to L. Okay, because it's just the nth minus 1 terms. Okay. Because S of n is going to L, S of n minus 1 will, go, will go, also go to L. Therefore, uh, we can, right, therefore, we can see the limit of A sub n as n approaches infinity must be 0 in order to preserve this equation. So we have that L right, is equal to L plus the limit of a sub n, of the nth term as n goes infinity, this has got to be, right, so if we solve for the, if we solve for that, this has got to go to zero. And that is what we wanted to show. That was the Q statement that we had. Okay. All right, so, okay, so we uh, actually proved this result. Okay. So now, so now that we have this theorem, now we can talk about the interim test for divergence of a series. So to talk about that, uh, to discuss this, we need to talk about the contrapositive statement. Okay. Okay, so going back, remember we have the direct statement.
Okay, that is P implies Q, and then you have the, what's called the we have what's called the contrapositive statement. So the contrapositive statement is going to be the negation of Q implies the negation of P. So in other words, not P, Q implies not P. Okay. So that's what the tilde means. Okay, it just means the negation of that statement. So in our case, okay, for our theorem, okay, that means we're going to have, okay, so we're going to negate Q, which is going to be, that means the limit is not going to approach zero. Okay, so for the contrapositive statement, we have, okay, the limit of A sub n is not going to be zero. Okay, that's the negation of the limit going to zero. So this is going to imply the negation of Q. The negation of Q, right? I'm sorry, the negation. Oops. The negation, I'm sorry, negation of P is going to be that the series diverges. Okay. And it's starting from one or zero. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But just to be consistent, I'll put yeah one. So the series, okay, is going to right, this is going to be diverging now. Okay, so that's the contrapositive of this theorem that we see here. Okay, so not Q applies not P. Right? Okay. So this is the, uh, so basically this is, this turns out to be the nth term test. Okay, that's the nth term test for divergence. Okay. All right, that is the nth term test for, for divergence. Okay. For divergence of a series okay so it's important to realize here that again if the series is converging it doesn't it means right it, it means that this the terms of that sequence are going to zero but not true the other way around just because the limit of the sequence part is going to zero doesn't mean the series converges however if the limit of the sequence doesn't go to zero, which is what you see here. Okay, that implies that the series will diverge. Okay, all right. 